there'll be Qatar and Ecuador players waking up today knowing that this tournament kicks off with their game. How do you feel when you're waking up on that day when it's your first World Cup game? Nervous, very nervous, because my first game was in Sardinia against England, which is, <laughs> you know, everyone knows the, the, the sort of standard that when you play England, it's... It's a huge game, and we're in Sardinia, and it was the worst weather it could have been. It poured down. <laughs> and yet you've been saying it's hot every World Cup. Yes, every, every World Cup's hot, but no, not on that night in Sardinia. And um, there's a lot of nerves about, and the, I tell you what struck me, don't get beat. Mm. Really struck me that whatever you do, don't open the campaign with a defeat, because you're literally, pressure is everywhere. Yeah. So you... You know, if you take when France lost to Senegal a few a couple of tournaments back and, you know, the pressure was on the team immediately. You've been beaten by a team you shouldn't be beaten by. Mm. And I remember that. And England and us, at the end of the game, we drew 1-1. There was quite a lot of relief that we, no one had suffered a defeat. Mm. Um, yeah, so there was a lot of pressure on avoiding defeat. That was quite clear because the whole intention is to get out of the group. By hook or by crook, you've got to get out of the group. Mm. And uh, obviously we achieved that and so did England in that particular tournament. But nerves, well, we don't play any part in the, the build-up. You know, we don't do what the Olympics team where players are marching around. Got so class, we watch yeah. the build like like loads of other fans and, and also watch a lot of games. We had the telly in our, in our breakfast room at dinner time. We'd have the, the games on the telly all the time. So we're watching everybody. Yeah. In case you end up playing them. Well, yeah. When, <laughs> I can remember Big Jack when... He'd seen Cameroon for the first time in 1990. And he was going bonkers in the, in the, in the dinner, you know, saying, we don't want to get these, they'll beat us. You know, <laughs> thinking, you're not even talking about Brazil or, you know, yeah, or yeah. Argentina or Italy. These will beat like, us. Yeah. You know, and he went, you don't... And it was incredible, because at that tournament in 1990, they went really deep and nearly knocked England out. Mm. You know, they were such a good side. And, and Jack had spoke about them after watching them about 30 minutes. He went, don't want to play these. He just you know, knew he'd yeah, be a and, challenge. Yeah, and he was right. He was spot on. They were a very dangerous team yeah. that caused you problems all over the pitch. So yeah, that struck me. That, mm. was, that was very funny being, being around and listening to the, the fear that was Cameroon and not so much, you know, the, some but of the leading that, nations. Would that have been, and, and forgive me, maybe I'm doing Jack and everyone a disservice, but would that have been because everyone knew about the, the threats of Argentina and they knew the threats of Brazil, let's say? Is it because Cameroon at that time were an unknown but, until you were well, watching them or...? They were a very big side, first of all, which was a problem. Huge, you know, and, and, and I've heard England talk about players have spoken about this before. You stand it, stood next to them in the lineup, going out through the tunnel. You know, a huge team yeah. and incredibly physical. They, they were probably a bit naive because at that time they were very adventurous. Their game was to attack you. And, you know, so we're going back to 1990, and they came after you, and he, he feared that. He thought mm. the, this side could cause you lots of problems, and which they did all through the tournament to everybody they played. Yeah. So in terms of a little gem, just to get us going, anything that <laughs> springs to mind that you think, oh, this is a story that everyone needs to hear on, well, on the day of a World Cup? Well, I'll, I'll tell the one about America in 94, because I, I played alongside Andy Townsend as a kid. So I'm, me and Andy knew each other since we were 11. And there we are in America... And uh, the tournament's opened, and Andy said before the first game, he said, I'm going to go and get my hair highlighted. <laughs> so I've gone, really? He's got, I'm going to go blonde. So we're chatting in the room, and I said to him, I'll tell you what, Andy, get me a Chaton Clear. I'm going to do. And he went, Chaton Clear? I said, it's like a light brown. Because I used to, when I was, growing, when I was doing hairdressing now, yes. I used to have a blue rinse, and it was a very subtle blue Did rinse you? in my hair. And people used to say, your hair's a bit of a strange colour. It's not dark. It's got a blue tone to it, I said, especially with a light. So I have persuaded Andy to get me a Chaton Clear colour for my hair, because I said, I'm going to change the colour of my hair well, as well. What colour is that when you're saying a Chateau Clear? It's a, like a lightish brown. Okay. okay. But he's going blonde. So he comes back with a blonde hair, and you see him in the opening game. He's got this incredible blonde hair, which Andy's really dark. So... He's got me the sat on clear. He's given me the box, and I've gone to the bathroom, and I've put it all on and all that. And I'm looking in the mirror, and I'm thinking, this is weird. This is like, for our older listeners, like uh, Mrs. Slocum in uh, Are You Being Served? It's like a plum rinse <laughs> colour. So I'm looking and thinking, this isn't right. I'm looking at my hair, thinking, something wrong. And I'm shouting at Anne. I'm going, Anne, this isn't right. So I've gone into the room, and he's looking at me, and he's got a box in his hand. 
and it's got plum rinse written on. <laughs> and he's changed. He's bought two packets. He's bought a plum rinse and a Chateau Clear, and he's put the plum rinse in the Chateau oh. Clear box and given it to me, and I put it on my hair. My hair's literally plum. Right, so I'm like, are you, yeah? And he's telling the lads to come in. They're all coming in to see me with his wigs on the air. And oh, it was so funny at the time. But uh, of course, I've had to wash it and get it all off. Say. And then I put the Chateau Clear on afterwards. But he's done me like a kipper. <laughs> all the lads, he's invited everybody to the room saying, come and have a look. I'll put, give Cass a plum rinse to put. You didn't fancy it? Didn't think you suited <laughs> no, it in the end? No, and um, it was funny. And um, Andy was a great prankster. He always loved to wind up. He was always doing something. And... Um, the plum rinse got me like, a, you know, absolute killed me. Mm. Uh, but he stayed with his blonde hair the whole tournament, uh, which was, for him, because Andy's quite a straight guy, as in, he didn't do, he didn't sort of go any, he, wasn't, he didn't have a side to him, a bit crazy at times. He was mm. never like that. Then suddenly he's gone for this blonde, blonde hair. hair. Did he yeah. ever say why? Like, what was no, he just said, I'm going to do it. Just one day he got up and there we were. And America was a funny, funny uh, experience anyway, because it, it felt like we wasn't in any, at that particular time, no, we weren't in a football environment. It was all, mm -hmm. you know, we walked out of a hotel. You wouldn't believe there was a World Cup going on. Do they not have, like, like we see here and, and every now tournament you see, the, all the sort of um, paraphernalia, you know, all the sort of flags and everything? No, not you didn't really, have anything no. like that to no, say, It was only suggest. in the hotel. The That's hotel was, you, you really believed you was in, because lots of fans would come to the hotel. Mm. So you'd felt that every time you come back from training, there'd be fans, you'd be signing things, and people were saying hello and visiting you. The moment you got out and you went to a mall, I said, not any idea there was a World Cup going on at all.